please to my social media handles and all the links are down below in the description box. Hi, welcome to Book in a Nook or Book in a Nook. I'm Ollie and uh, thanks, yeah, I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good, good to hear. Uh, anyway, I'm just here to help you if you need to find books or anything. Um, are you looking for yourself or is it a present you're going to get someone? Right, okay. Alright then, yeah, I mean, I could definitely rustle some stuff up if you'd like. Um, I'll have a look and see see what sort of books we've got. I mean, we've got a lot for a bookstore. Uh, what sort of genre are they into, or do you not really know? Okay. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, you spoke rapidly just then, I responded. Almost as if I knew what you were going to say. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, well, I can have a look. So, would you say true crime? And classics. Sure, yeah, we'll definitely we've definitely got a lot of classics. Um in terms of true crime, you know, I know it's a popular genre at the minute. We might have a couple. Um I'll have a look. I'll have a look and see what I can rustle up. Um do you want to have a look around at all or anything or Okay, well I'll go and have a look around the shop and I'll try and bring back a selection and we'll see if there's anything that sort of takes your fancy. Right, so, I've got a couple books here, which sort of fit the brief, relatively vague description you gave me. Uh, and we'll just go through them and see if there's anything you're into. And if it is, brilliant. You know, you can maybe buy, buy a book today. You'll be our first customer in weeks. Kindle is ruining us. And yeah, I love the feeling of a book as well. I know it ruins trees, but like, maybe if we could, you know, get hemp to be more popular then deforestation wouldn't be so... Anyway, that's a topic for another day. Let's have a look. So, you mentioned true crime. The first book I've got here... It's called Helter Skelter, and it's about the Manson family murders. Well, technically, it's like a biography of... Charles Manson. Uh, the book got its title from a Beatles song, which uh, Charles Manson himself thought was delivering him a secret message. Uh, you know, the song Helter a Skelter. Yeah, it's like, like the precursor to heavy metal. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. Now I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm and I go for a ride. That's the one. So yeah. I'll read you the, uh, the blurb. It's, it's kind of a synopsis, but... On the 9th of August, 1969, five people were found shot, stabbed, and bludgeoned to death in Los Angeles. America watched in fascinated horror as the killers were tried and convicted, but the real questions went unanswered. How did Manson make his family kill for him? What made these young men and women kill again and again with no trace of remorse? Did the murders continue even after Manson's imprisonment? So, you know, some interesting questions there, I think. Um, it sort of has been answered, you know. He just gave them copious amounts of acid. And it's sort of, you know... But I don't want to... I don't want to give it away. So it's a... This book also includes a chilling 64-page photographic record of the victims, the killers, and the evidence. And as you can see on the front, it's a, a young Charles Manson, no swastika there on the forehead. Uh, let's have a look at some of these photos I mentioned. Okay, so, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the, Tar the most recent Tarantino film. Yeah, so it sort of vaguely, in and out, mentions these murders. Well, by vaguely, I mean it's an entirely reimagined version of the murders. So it's it's sort of got crime scenes and descriptions of what the the Manson family did. So as you can see here, the, you know, first the telephone wires were cut, and then fearing the gate was electrified, the killers avoided it. Instead, they scaled the embankment to the right of the gate. Later, on fleeing the premises, one of the killers left a bloody fingerprint on the button of the gate control mechanism. Still later, an LAPD officer pushed the button creating a superimposed a superimposure which eradicated the print
So do you think this is going to be um, a book they'd be interested in? I think it's sort of the the quintessential true crime book, in my opinion. Okay, sweet. So we'll put it in the maybe pile, and we can come back to it later and decide. Love where your head's at. Love it. Okay, I'll put it down here. So the next book I've got is by Alexa Chung, and it's called It. No clowns feature in this book. The, the you know the one by Stephen King. It's like bloody miles, miles long. So this book. I've actually no idea. I've never heard of this book before. But it's got a lovely sort of cover. It's like felt or canvas. It's like a canvas kind of hardback book. So it's not really got any blurbs or anything that I can find. Seems like a, a photograph, photograph book. Yeah, I don't know why I brought this book out. I'm real sorry. Let's move on. So, the next book I've got, it's another true crime book. It's called The Stranger Beside Me. Now, this book was actually written lover of Ted Bundy, the American serial killer. I'll read you the blurb. When Anne Rule and Ted Bundy became friends while working at a Seattle crisis clinic in 1971, she had no idea that her kind, charismatic co-worker would go on to become one of the world's most notorious serial killers, who confessed to murdering at least 36 women across America. In The Stranger Beside Me, Rule decides not only her personal relationship with Bundy, but his life, covering everything from his complicated childhood to the media circus revolving around his trials and his eventual execution. An unforgettable work of research, journalism and personal memories, the stranger beside me defies the expectation that we would know if a monster walked across, walked among us. And it's got this like really sort of Hollywood blurb. It goes, she was his close friend and colleague. She thought she knew him well, but she didn't know. The monster within. You know, it's very over dramatized. He killed he killed a bunch of people. But yeah, it's uh, the definitive story of the Ted Bundy case. And as you can see, Ted Bundy underlined there to really push home the point that this book is about Ted Bundy. I mean, yeah, it's if you want my actual opinion of the book, uh I think it's overhyped. I found it a bit hard to get through myself. Like, you know, it's got some interesting photos here. And it, it does, but it's, it's mostly just written and it's, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, I, I, yeah, I think it's interesting. And if you enjoyed the Netflix docu-series about Ted Bundy, this could be, you know, a, an interesting adage to or add on. To sort of get you some more information regarding that, because it does go into a lot of detail. But at the same time, like you know, the the Manson book, the Helter Skelter book, it's definitely a much better true crime book, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. This one sort of just delves into the relationship and things. Should I put it in the maybe pile or? Okay, I've actually, okay. So I'm not the best shop assistant. I get that. I know I'm meant to be trying to sell you the book, but I'm not going to sell you a book I wouldn't personally buy. And while, you know, I do own this book at home, I own a lot of books, so.
It's $25. The Manson one? It's only 15. It's on special at the minute. Okay, I'll put it in the note pile. So, next up, I've got one of my favourite books ever. It's Ernest Hemingway's For Whom the Bell Tolls. And I, we do somewhere around here a farewell to arms. We have a copy of that as well, um, which is a much quicker read. You know, this is much longer. But it's beautiful and you know obviously Hemingway experienced war and he writes about war and love and loss really well really beautifully the guy himself was an asshole no doubt about it interesting writer have you ever read any of Hemingway's books before right so he writes really interestingly he uses the word and a lot you know he'll be like the weather was nice and the sun was warm, and we stayed by the lake, and the leaves were there, and my friends and I laughed, and, you know, obviously not not quite that simple, but he likes to, he likes to run on sentences quite a lot. But his stories and what he deals with, and it's very true, and it's quite beautiful. I do like him. Well, I like his books, you know. I'll read you the blurb. High in the pine forests of the Spanish Sierra, a guerrilla band prepares to blow up a vital bridge. Robert Jordan, a young American volunteer, has been sent to handle the dynamiting. There, in the mountains, he finds the dangers and the intense comradeship of war. And there he discovers Maria, a young woman who has escaped from Franco's rebels. For Whom the Bell Tolls is Hemingway's finest novel, a passionate ev evocation of the pride and the tragedy of the Civil War that tore Spain apart. Now, if you're not too familiar with the Spanish Civil War, like in the, it was like mid to late 30s, I think 1936 is when it started, um, that doesn't matter. You know, it deals with all the same themes that you would expect of a book that is set during a war. And, um, like, Farewell to Arms, that was set in the First World War, I'm pretty sure. And it starts off in this very small town and sort of, you know, deals with the same thing, love and loss and war and, you know, the, the cruelty of mankind almost, but also the beauty. Hemingway, he wrote a lot of a lot of really acclaimed books, you know, uh, Fell to Arms, Old Man in the Sea, For Whom the Bell Tolls. But this has always been sort of lauded as his his piece de resistance. You know, if I can, uh, I don't even know what language that is. I don't know what that means. I think it means like his his best work. This one's five dollars. Yeah. Real cheap, real cheap, especially for, you know, uh, a great book. Uh, to learn a bit more, I said you got a little uh, slight biography of Ernest Hemingway in the front here. And it says, Ernest Miller Hemingway was born in 1899. His father was a doctor and he was the second of six children. Their home was at Oak Park, a Chicago suburb. And it sort of goes on and it mentions how he, he started off as a reporter and then he goes to war as a as a correspondence uh, reporter, and just sees so much uh, death and destruction firsthand, and how it inspires his writing. And it also goes into um, some of his personal relationships as well, which which were just terrible. He did not have a happy life. Really interesting guy, though. Should I put it in the note pile? Nice one. Okay, I will do that. Where are you? The next book I've got. Now this it's not true crime. It's fictional crime. You might be interested. All right, they're not too interested in fictional crime. Well, like James Patterson, it's kind of like a James Patterson. You never read like the Alex Cross novels. It's kind of like that, I guess. I'll read it, yeah. Dedicated, intuitive, and utterly obsessive. DCI James Langton, great last name, almost as good as, you know, is ruthless in his pursuit of a gang of illegal immigrants, killers of a young prostitute. When he is horrifically, almost fatally injured by one of them, it falls upon D.I. Anna Travis to put her own career on hold as she nurses him through his intense frustration and desperation to bring his would-be murderer to justice. Then Anna is assigned to a different case, a senseless attack with no obvious motive or immediate suspect, until, chillingly, 
the case becomes unexpectedly linked with Langton's, and Anna finds herself under similar threat from those who almost destroyed his career and his life. So the Irish Times has said that it's not one for the faint-hearted, thought-provoking and fast-paced. And the Daily Express has said, such a visceral read. Laplante's passionate conviction that society has become the hostage of criminals really gives the book its charge. So yeah, I mean, I've never read this book. It's in our bargain, you know. It's, uh, it's a couple bucks. Yeah, I'll give it you for a dollar. Okay, you're not still not keen? You're not sure they really would be into it? It's more like, so it's like the, the, the sort of true aspect of the true crime novels that gets their juices flowing a bit. The fact that it actually happened, it's not someone's creation almost. I see what you're saying, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll put it in the no pile then. Alright, the next book I was thinking was this one. Uh, again, it's it's a non-true crime book. It's called Blind Fury. It's by the same writer, uh, Linda Laplante. She's a British writer from Liverpool, I think. Yeah. But no, it's it's similar. It's Anna Travis and James Langton again. Um, not really into it. Uh, you can, I'd even pay you to take it. No one's bought this book in the entire time I've worked here. On and off for about four days. I worked here, yeah. Okay, so you're not getting this. Fair enough. Okay, I'll put that in the no pile. Now the last book. Is another true crime book. I've not read this one either. Um, but it looks like it's less like murder. Like the Madison families and the book about Ted Bundy obviously dealt with murder and death and things this is about drug dealers and sort of I think they bust uh, some of Britain's drug d- d- drugliest dead lords <laughs> deadliest drug lords I'll read you the blurb fighting on the front line of the war against crime Cam Adicott was one of the few hard-boiled and highly experienced surveillance operatives to get called up to the secretive and elite alpha projects unit a group of dedicated undercover customs officers who hunted the UK's most dangerous criminals by extraordinary means. Starting with the interception and decoding of their phone calls, Cam's team shadowed gangsters as they mixed with celebrities, as they brokered huge drug deals in nightclubs and airports, and as they discussed how to spend their ill-gotten gains until, finally, it was time for Alpha to strike. Could you be into that? It could be interesting, I guess. And um, oh, it looks like the, the previous, the previous owner, because obviously we do have second-hand books here. They've had a uh, had a postcard in it. Oh, it's even <laughs> wow. Okay, so it's even got a little note here. So it comes with a bit of a bit of history. Every book's got a bit of history, of course. This note says, "Dear Smelly, you take ages to read a book." From the most beautifulest person in the world, exclamation point. No idea who that's from. Do you think you'd be interested in this book, though? Should I put it in the maybe pile? Okay, so we have got three books in the maybe pile. Okay, so I'll just run through them again, obviously. Helter Skelter. The book about the Manson family murders. We've got Hemingway, For Whom the Bell Tolls. I cannot recommend this book enough. And The Interceptor, the inside story of the ultra-secret unit that hunted down Britain's deadliest drug lords. So that was our mate. You just want to get these two. You're not too keen. Okay, fair enough. I think that's that's a good choice, I think. I think, you know, it's uh, they're into true crime and also classic books. I mean... One of each right here, and that's kind of what we wanted. Yeah, I'll ring that up for you now. It's uh, 20 dollars $20 total. Do you have a bag? I'm afraid we don't have any bags here. Yeah, it's just the environment. 
Okay, and can you pay by card? We can't handle cash. Yeah, bank transfer's fine, certainly. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, sure, I'll put it in... in here for you. Ruined. Okay. There you go. Certainly, I was. Okay, I'll put it down for you. Uh, I hope your friend is happy with those books. Uh, I think they're two fantastic choices, in my opinion. Um, we do have a loyalty program, so if you buy eight books and you do get a ninth book for free, so I'll put two stamps on there for you. Uh, if you just purchase six more books on a future, future visit, uh, you'll get a ninth book for free of your choosing any book in here apart from the Guinness World Records books because um, I don't know, they're just weird and shiny and weirdly coloured I don't like them, they're very glossy and their pages are too heavy okay, thank you for coming in today and you're always welcome at Book in a Nook see you again soon, bye